In this video, I'm making a dining table out of this live edge slab, and I'm excited about this project because I partnered with a local business to sell this table with 100% of those proceeds going to the Make-A-Wish Oklahoma Foundation. Now, it's just before the holidays when I'm building this, and we wanted to do something to give back. Now, like you've seen me do in the past, I'm using a piece of cottonwood, which is plentiful here in Oklahoma where I live. Now, cottonwood is beautiful, and if you watch my glass river table, you've seen all the crazy grain and figuring that cottonwood has. So I'm excited to see what this slab has in store for me, and let's back up to see how and where and why I picked this slab. Look at all these slabs. Okay, y'all, I'm back here at my favorite lumber yard in Oklahoma City, and that's Vintage Reclaim Lumber. We're collaborating on this table build. I'm gonna build a table. They're gonna sell it in their furniture store, Grain and Grange, and we're gonna donate all those proceeds to the charity. I'm looking through these stacks of kiln-dried slabs, and at this point, I wasn't sure what species I was looking for, but I knew sort of the shape that I was going for. Okay, this is the one right here, and the reason being, I really liked the way this kicks out. What I'll do is I'll straight line rip this side so that'll be one side of the table and then I'm gonna do a big epoxy pour and really highlight this little kick out right here. So the friendly folks at VRL got the slab loaded up and I got it back to my shop to start flattening which I'm gonna do on my Avid CNC. Okay, so unfortunately this slab is a little bit more cupped than what I anticipated, but I've got a solution for it. So essentially you wanna measure the corners and how they're sitting off the table, the height. But this corner is sitting three and a half inches off the table, and this corner is sitting two and seven eighths off the table. So what I need to do is I need to shim those two to get them where they're about as close to equal as I can. Then what I'll do is I'll run my uh, flattening passes and just try to take off the high side on either edge. Work on those first, then I can flip it, and then I'll have to do the same thing, but that should take a lot of that extra cupping out of the equation. And like I've mentioned, I'm just manually jogging the machine back and forth to do these first flattening passes, which I can do with the arrow keys on my keyboard. I'm running an inch and a half flattening bit, and when I got those initial passes done, I'm gonna go ahead and straight line rip the slab down the length, which will further take out some of that cupping. This 10-foot Festool track runs over $350 by itself, which is crazy for a piece of aluminum. But man, it is so nice to have for these long straight line ripping operations like this. This slab is thicker than the cutting depth of the saw, so I have to flip the whole thing over to cut the rest of the way through and try not to take out my toes in the process. Now I can throw the slab back onto the CNC to finish the rest of the flattening. I also ran a pass to cut the slab to length and final width, but the bit doesn't reach all the way through, so I have to cut the rest of the way with my track saw. The base is gonna be a big feature of this table, so I jumped into SketchUp to design a pair of table bases that are meant to look like a vintage tool base, like those big cast iron ones you've seen out there. And then they're gonna be joined by two massive pieces of two inch all thread. And this is really meant to match the style of tables that they make over at VRL, but to accomplish that using a completely new process than what they do. I'll be stacking plywood to build up the table bases, and I cut the table base in half in SketchUp so it would nest better on the CNC software, which cut my material needs down from six sheets of plywood to two and a half sheets. Okay, it's time to start carving those pieces that are gonna become the base. We're gonna go ahead and cut that out of this radiata pine plywood. Now, before some of you go diving into the comments to totally let me have it for using radiata pine, there's a reason why. A, it's gonna be more than strong enough to support the table, and then B, we're gonna do a finishing technique to this that's gonna make it look like rusted iron. It's a technique that they do over at Vintage Reclaim Lumber, and once I'm done with this operation and my shop is kind of dust free, I can get to pouring the epoxy next. Each half section of the table base has five solid layers and two trim layers. So you double that for each leg and then double that again for both bases. 
and I end up with 28 pieces to cut out. You can also see the two small quarter inch holes that I added to each piece. This is so I can use a quarter inch dowel for alignment when I glue these up. I'm using a down cut bit which leaves a nice clean top surface, but that bottom surface comes off the machine needing a bunch of sanding and cleanup, which is what you see me doing right here. Once I've got everything cleaned up, I can move on to the glue up, and now you can see how those quarter inch dowels help me keep those layers aligned as I build it up. I'm using wood glue and shooting in some brad nails to hold the layers together while that glue dries. Even with the alignment dowels, there's still some slight variance between the layers, which I cleaned up over on the spindle sander. I'm attaching the two halves together with some dominoes and a ton of glue. Right now, I'm not worried about this gap because I'm gonna fill this in with some Bondo once that glue dries. Here I'm adding the trim pieces to both sides and then using that Bondo wood filler to cover up the seam, my nail holes, and to smooth the edges and fill any gaps. The technique they're gonna do over at VRL will make the bases look like cast metal and completely hide that plywood edge grain, but I still need to fill any holes so that doesn't show through on the finished piece. I finished by adding a small round over to all the edges and then drop the legs off over at VRL. All right, let's take a quick minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, and that's NordVPN. So it's the holiday season, and if you're anything like me, you're doing a ton of online shopping. And I started thinking about going to all those different websites, entering my personal information, my credit card data. Am I safe? Well, the answer is yes, because I use NordVPN. So you might be asking, what is a VPN? Well, VPN is a virtual private network, which is a service that protects your internet connection and your online privacy by hiding your IP address. And NordVPN has amazing speeds that are confirmed by speed tests to be the fastest VPN out there. Just go to nordvpn.com slash johnnybuilds to get a two-year plan plus one additional month at a huge discount. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Let's say you wanna watch that big football game and it's blacked out in your local market. What are you going to do? I can open up NordVPN and with just one click of a button, completely change my location. Let's try Chicago. Bingo. Now you're streaming the big game. NordVPN has over 5,200 servers in 60 different countries, so you can make the internet think you're almost anywhere in the world. Again, just go to nordvpn.com slash johnnybuilds to get a two-year plan plus one additional month at a huge discount. Okay, thanks to NordVPN for supporting this channel. Now back to the show. All right, so I'm back here at Vintage Reclaim Lumber. They just called me and said the legs are all ready to be picked up. They sent me a picture and they look awesome. Let's go inside and check it out. Oh, dude. Boom, they look 500 years old. What? Killer. Wow, man. It's sick and finished. Looks exactly, shouldn't set it on the sofa, but I'll go. It's exactly like it's supposed to. So this is a proprietary technique that Vintage Reclaim Lumber does and they call it texture bronze, which I can't show you and I only wish I knew the secret recipe myself. Okay, back to the shop to get ready for the biggest epoxy pour I've ever done. I'm cleaning up the leftover bark from the live edge and then sealing that edge and the top with some Total Boat Gleam varnish to prevent bubbles and to seal the top from any epoxy staining. I had a bunch of comments when I made this epoxy workbench on how I would use this as a large form and fill those gaps. And I'm able to show you guys how I do that right here. I filled those grooves with plywood and then cover that up with some tuck tape. And then next I screw plywood strips to support the sides of the form and add additional length, which I need for this seven and a half foot long table. It's super nice having this dedicated epoxy pouring workbench. And if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you do when you're done watching this one. Okay, y'all, it is time for the main event. I'm about to pour 10 gallons of Total Boat Epoxy. I'm going to mix in some of this black dispersion pigment and then add in some of this pearl ghost sapphire, ghost pearl blue, whatever the heck it's called. Uh, I'm gonna add some of that and give it a really cool swirl pattern. The biggest epoxy pour. 
There's a train. <laughs> the biggest epoxy pour I've ever done. I'm mixing up the six gallons of Fathom epoxy from Total Boat, which you can pour up to three inches deep. I wasn't able to get 10 gallons of Fathom in time for this table. So like I've done before, I'm using Fathom and then Thick Set in two separate pours. I added four gallons of Total Boat Thick Set and this still didn't fill the form up all the way. In the end, it took 11 and a half gallons of epoxy and all those kits combined cost right at $1,400, which is one of the reasons an epoxy table like this can command such a high price from a customer. Also, if you're gonna pay that much for materials, you want a product that you can really rely on. And I've been working with Total Boat for years now and I cannot recommend their epoxy enough. I've got links for all those products down below, plus a 10% off code. I also upgraded my flattening bit from that two cutter inch and a half bit to this two and a half inch fly cutter that has four cutter heads. And I'll drop a link for this bit below, but this thing cut so well and was surprisingly quiet compared to the other cutter. Next, I cut out the pockets for the mounting plates where the legs attach to the tabletop. And as you'll see later, I actually messed up the placement and had to cut these a second time. This is a big table and I really wanted to have the best finish I've ever done on the table since this is gonna end up in the Grain and Grain showroom and be listed for $10,000 with all those proceeds going to Make-A-Wish Oklahoma. This meant I was literally sanding this table for two days, working my way from 80 grit up to 220 grit, popping the grain with water and then going through all those grits a second time. Here I'm using a light to identify any scratch marks or swirls that I may have missed and then sand those out as well. I also used a router here to add a subtle round over before finishing the table with some Odie's oil. Y'all know this is my favorite finish because it's all natural, it smells really nice, and it's super easy to apply. Now I have zero affiliation with Odie's, I just think it's a really good product, and I'll make sure I'll leave a link for that down below as well. Here you can see where I really goofed on cutting the recess for those mounting plates. I actually designed those plates in SketchUp with elongated mounting holes and my friend Richard over at 42Fab cut them out on his plasma table for me. I'll first attach the mounting plates with some Total Boat Thixo epoxy and off camera I added four screws to secure each plate to the legs as well. Steel prices continue to be crazy and this 12 foot stick of two inch all thread and those eight giant nuts I needed to go with it cost $320, which is just nuts. I cut the all thread the length and eased the edges with a flat disc. Even though this little mistake won't be visible, I wanted to pass that area with some strips of wood. So if whoever buys it happens to run their hand into the table, they won't actually feel the mistake. I also used my file sander here to remount the holes for the all thread so they could still fit after that finish had been applied, which is gonna tighten up those holes a little bit. I used some mineral spirits to clean the all thread and the nuts and then hit them with some spray lacquer to clear coat them and protect them from rusting. This table is so heavy I can't assemble it by myself in my shop so I'm loading it up to take over to the grain and grade showroom where the owner Todd and myself got this table all assembled. So stay tuned for the full details on this table where you can purchase it and how 100% of those proceeds are gonna be donated to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. But for now, I must say, wow, this table turned out so nice. And again, I cannot believe how good those table legs look and how much they actually look like a real piece of cast metal that's hundreds of years old. And kudos to the crew over there at Vintage Reclaim Lumber for that.
Okay, that is a wrap on this table, and I really think it's one of the nicest pieces I've ever made. I absolutely love the way this thing came out. And the best part, we're donating 100% of the proceeds to charity. Now, this is my friend, Todd Miller. He's the owner of Vintage Reclaimed Lumber and the Grain and Grange showroom, which we're in right now, which you can come here, see this table in person here in the Oklahoma City Stockyards and purchase this for yourself. Or I'll have a link down below with more information on my website, how you can purchase this table and 100% of those proceeds are going to the Make-A-Wish Oklahoma Foundation. Todd donated this slab. His crew did the awesome technique on the legs to make them look like cast metal. Todd, thank you so much, man. It was, it was great to partner with you. This thing came out beautiful. I'm so glad that 100% of the proceeds are going to the Make-A-Wish Oklahoma Foundation. Man, this thing came out awesome. It's legit, 100% there. Heck yeah. All right, thanks for checking this one out and I'll see you back here next time.